Today, we're gonna go over the basics of building a computer. Stay tuned. So it's been a couple months since I've done a system build, so I figured since I'm waiting for some stuff to come in for some other videos that I have planned, I figured what better way to fill the time than to do a system build. This is just a really basic business system that I'm building for a customer right now. Um, this is going to be the first Intel system that we've built. It's going to be an i5-9400. We're going to use an ASUS Prime motherboard as well as G-Skill Ripjaw DDR4, and we're gonna have a one terabyte MVME drive all inside of this affordable mid-tower case. So, let's get to it. The first step is to find a place to set the motherboard down. I'm using an anti-static pad, but you can also use the motherboard box. To install an Intel CPU, push the lever down to unclip it, then open the load plate. Do not touch the socket contacts or the bottom of the processor. Hold the processor with your thumb and index finger. Make sure that the socket notches align with the processor notches. Close the load plate and the protective cover should automatically pop off. Make sure to save this protective cover just in case you ever take the processor out. To install the heatsink, align the clips to the four holes on the motherboard and then push down on each one individually. Now make sure to plug in the CPU fan while you're here. When installing the memory modules, make sure to align the slot in the middle correctly with the socket, and then push down and they should snap into place. To install the MVME drive, attach the plastic clip onto the motherboard. Then, Lower the MVME drive into the slot and carefully push it down while pushing the plastic retaining clip down to hold it in place. Now let's hook up the power supply. You can either use a test power supply or the power supply you're going to be using in the build. Don't forget to plug in the CPU power. Now, let's connect all of the I.O. We're just going to hook up a keyboard and mouse and a monitor for now. Now, use a screwdriver to short the power pin to fire the motherboard up. And there we go. Everything's working fine. Remove the side panel from the case and set the case down so we can get access to the inside. Now we're going to install the standoffs. Make sure that you only put a standoff where one is needed because these can actually short out the bottom of the motherboard if you put a standoff in a place where there isn't a hole to match up with it. Don't forget to put in the IO shield. This is the most commonly forgotten component. And if you forget, you'll have to tear it all apart in order to fix it. Now it's time to drop the completed motherboard assembly from the last step into the case. Now here we're going to install the screws into the standoffs that we installed before. If you find that you installed a standoff in the wrong spot, you need to fix it now or you could cause damage to your system. Here we're connecting the USB 3 and the HD audio. We're also connecting the power button and reset button as well as the power light and the hard drive light. These can sometimes be difficult to install, but take your time and make sure you connect them correctly. Refer to your motherboard's manual or the silk screen on the motherboard to know how these are connected. And don't forget the speaker. Now let's hook up the power to the motherboard. Make sure you untangle these cables so it'll be easier to cable manage them later. Here I'm hooking up the fan. 
What I like to do is wrap the fan wire around the fan and then tie strap it to the edge of the fan in order to make the lead shorter so it doesn't get in the way of anything. This is a small detail that can actually go a long way to making the inside of the computer look nice. Now we're going to wrap up all the excess cable with a wire tie. Make sure you leave out any cables that you may need. And then clip the end of the wire tie. And that's all there is to assembling the computer. Now we're going to hook up the keyboard and mouse and power to the back of the computer so we can set up windows. Here's our Windows install. Let's get started. Now let's get started setting up Windows. On the first screen, we're going to choose our language and hit next, and then click install now. On this screen is where you enter your license key. I'm going to skip that at this point. You can skip it as well if you don't have a license key yet. Now we choose the version of Windows that we have a license for. I'm going to pick Windows 10 Home. and then we accept the license agreement and hit next. Now I'm going to click on custom install and then I'm going to actually create the partitions now. So you hit new and then hit apply and Windows 10 will automatically create your partitions. Then you format the installation partition. Now hit next. Now at this point this is going to take a little while so I'm going to speed this up. Alright, now we're ready to restart. At this point you can push the restart now button if you'd like or you can just wait for it to restart by itself. Windows may restart a few times during this process as it's getting things ready. Alright, now here's where Windows 10 is going to want a little bit of input from us. Now first, we need to choose our region. I'm choosing the United States, and then hit yes. Now we're going to want to confirm our keyboard layout, and hit yes. I'm going to skip adding another keyboard layout. On this screen, I'm going to skip for now connecting to a network. And then I'm going to hit no for connecting now. This will force Windows into creating a local user account. If you're connected to the internet while you're setting up Windows, this could cause Windows to create a Microsoft account, and I typically don't recommend creating Microsoft accounts. Now enter in your name and hit next. At this point you can enter a password or you can just hit next. I push decline for Cortana and then say no to Windows history. Then I just accept all the privacy settings. I'll go back later and clean these up. And there we go, we now have Windows 10 installed. At this point, Windows will automatically install many of the drivers that you need. You may need to go back manually and install drivers that Windows 10 doesn't detect. Now that we have Windows set up, it's time to plug our network in. Then the first thing that I typically do is go to Updates and Security and click on Check for Updates. And that's all it takes to build a computer. Not every computer is a high-end computer. While particulars might be different building high-end computers than lower-end basic computers like this one, the basics are all the same. So you should be able to transfer the skills that you learned on this one to build any system you want. So if this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and also subscribe to my channel. 
And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I make a new video every week. Have a great day.